Stay tuned until the end of this episode of Speedrun to find out how you can enter the final round of our Immortals Phoenix Rising giveaway made possible by Ubisoft Canada. Hello and welcome back to Speedrun, the fast talking video game podcast where we talk about pretty much anything weird and or retro that interests us. I, of course, am Jamie. Jazzy is having car troubles. Poor thing. Please, if you can comment on Podbean or want to email her at jazzy at stuffweplay.com, just, just send her good vibes. She's been dealing with a lot, and hopefully for both of us, things are uh, settling down soon. And just uh, she, She's lovely, and I, I hope things just calm down next week and look forward to recording more stuff with her very soon. That said, we are still going on as planned today because she insisted. So, with me today is a longtime friend. And someone who I'm very, very happy to have on the show. Goodness, I hope I wasn't peeking too badly before. Uh, Avis, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Avisa Edermark II, and I am your replacement furry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. Uh, I stream I, video I feel... games on the internet and sometimes make videos. And working videos. on video to get back to that. So, eat. Videos oh. and video games. Sorry, yes. I was peeking slightly, so I just <laughs> adjusted my audio. Uh, okay, you know what? The, the, this should be fine. I'm going yeah. to stop finagling with it. It's at 0.6, and I'm going to leave it at 0.6. But anyways, a certain game we both played as a kid is turning 20 this month. It will be the first game I ever played, too, technically, on the Dreamcast. Yeah, I, I didn't get it till it was on the GameCube, uh, and it was technically the first GameCube game I ever got given. And I say technically the first GameCube game I ever got, because when I got gifted my GameCube as a kid, it was the Mario Kart Double Dash bundle that also had, like, the, the bonus disc. I still have that bonus disc, by the way. But nice. obviously, we were rem remembering the Sonic Adventure series, which, for our sake, let's say Sonic Adventure 1, 2, and Heroes, because when else are we going to get to talk about that? <laughs> Same for Unleashed, which... I believe it was called Sonic World Adventure in Japan. Yeah, I guess Sonic 06. You know, let's, let's just do Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. And I'm going to put five <laughs> minutes <laughs> on the timer for each. Does exists. that sound good? Sure. Yeah. So, to start off, let's talk about Sonic Adventure 1. It was a launch title on the Dreamcast, but I didn't play it until Sonic Adventure DX on the GameCube. And like with Sonic Adventure 2... Yeah, the base Sonic gameplay is good, and I don't care for all of the side characters, but I like the variety, and I spent more time than I'd like to admit in the Chow Garden. I despise Amy, and that's kind of about it. At this point, I've gotten good enough with the other characters that I don't mind them. I can I can really? be done with the Big the Cat in, like, 14 minutes. Amy is the only one that just feels slow to me. Am I, I feel like I'm the only person who doesn't just tolerate Omega... Or not Omega, uh, Gamma, but who actually enjoys that gameplay. I really enjoy his stages, and I really enjoy the Tails and Eggman stages in SA2. Yeah, Omega was... Omega, um, Gamma is a blast. Omega is interesting, but that's another story I was going to say, Omega... That, yeah, that's the one who came in, what, Heroes? Heroes. Yeah, yeah, he came in Heroes, and he's been a mainstay in the series since... Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely love his IDW stuff. He's great in the IDW comics. I need to read the IDW comics. Honestly, I could talk about the comics for so long on so many tangents, just because how much <laughs> have I I've read of the old Archie comics? I think the IDW dive into, But Sonic Adventure One, I definitely think I like Sonic. I like Tails. I tolerate Knuckles. I tolerate Amy. I think Big is boring as hell, though. Hey, he's voiced by John St. John, so at least he has that going for him. Yeah, yeah that's the same guy voices Duke Nukem. And but he no, can get him married, get... too, in Big's voice. Yeah. Oh, wait, he's, he's a, a minister. Wedding? He's a minister. He's a registered minister. You know, as someone planning to get married uh, sometime You're going this year, to hire John St. John. <laughs> look, I might be Jewish, but I would totally have John St. John officiate my wedding. As Big the Cat. <laughs> As big the cat. Do I have him or 
Or or do I have him read like do I have a officiate in the Duke Nukem voice? Up to you. I think everyone's gonna be doing Duke Nukem because that's something he's known for. Oh, um, so 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 big the cat is how I stand out. <laughs> <laughs> that you are the Sonic tuber. Am I a Sonic tuber? I just finished I just finished Mega May. You've Am probably I? made more videos on Sonic than anything else when you think about it. I'm loading that to 0.56. I mean, look, I'm working on a, a Sonic documentary right now, but that 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 means nothing. <laughs> but no, SA1, pretty good? Uh, yeah, uh, I liked it. It was a, It's another first. It means it's the first game I ever bought. I still have that disc somewhere. The old Sonic Adventure 2 disc disintegrated. Oh, I, I think the, uh, again, uh, I mentioned this before the show, but of course, since it was the Dreamcast, having legit discs for it is kind of rare. And I was, yeah, young. my cousin was handling that either way. But I bought one single game for it, and that was Adventure One, which, to my knowledge, is still in the, in, in the same Dreamcast somewhere. Uh, SA1 is so good. I like DX I because I like how in DX on the GameCube, and I think that's the version like Steam and stuff now. Yeah, it's uh, you could version. unlock all the Game Gear games just randomly, which was cool. I yeah. never really minded how shiny the characters look, though being the nitpicky Sonic fangirl that I am. Um, yeah, the gra the graphics look better in the Dreamcast version. And also I mean, the Dreamcast I... version had that DLC. We could get Christmas Sonic. Yeah, you can still do that with the PC version through modding, because the modding community is amazing. Better SADX is a great tool. Um, you want the Dreamcast textures with DX everything? Then better SADX is where you go. Because it literally adds in every single feature that the game has had. Yes. Of course, the Steam version did not have the uh, Game Gear games, unfortunately. This mod adds what? them back in. Oh god. Yeah, it was, were they, it was only, were they uh, still in the code? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna i I'm not gonna question what they did to add them back. I'm just yeah, no, I always thought because I forget what else DX adds uh besides that and the shiny textures and just the fact it was on it adds the, uh, the bat it adds uh it adds a bunch of activities. Hell I could just watch the game right now and check. Um Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my head what it adds. I need Steam. Steam. And that's the first timer as well going off in the background. But yeah, uh, here, I'm going to Google this real quick. What does Sonic Adventure DX add? Because I know Sonic Adventure 2 Battle obviously had the battle mode that wasn't in the original. Yeah. Uh, um, okay. It's like that. Alright, so... so here we go from Wikipedia. In 2001, Sega announced it would transition from a first. Okay, blah blah blah, blah. In 2003, Sega released Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut, a port of Sonic Adventure for the GameCube and Windows. Oh, I forgot Windows. Yeah, that. Yeah, the original the PC that, that, port was an atrocity. <laughs> was that was that the one everyone complained about? Um, it would still be the GameCube version everyone complained about, but the uh, oh, but the Windows port right. was even worse. Which I think is what everything is based off of, not the GameCube. So despite characters looking shinier, there's a side-by-side -side that looks like a lot of the overworld textures more de uh, like more detailed in the GameCube version. Uh, higher Less resolution textures, updated graphics, uh, a frame rate of 60 FPS instead of 30, and a redesigned chow system that uses connectivity with the GBA, along with 60 new missions. Yeah, the mission mode. It added uh, oh. a bunch of stupid objectives that weren't really worth the effort. But and a, an addition, there. metal an addition, metal Sonic can be unlocked if all 130 em emblems are collected. Oh, I thought that I was all versions. Yeah, I that was in all versions. In I did that. It's not really worth the effort. <laughs> yeah, he's just like a reskin Sonic. But anyways, let's talk about the game that's much more controversial, even. Because people are like, it's not a great game. And I'm like, hearsay. And I went back, I'm like, all right. The emerald collecting stages suck, but I love the other two thirds of this game. 
Especially the Chow Garden. My God, I, I've spent so much time in the Chow Garden. I feel like freaking da David Byrne. My God, what did I done? What what have I done? <laughs> Starting out the second timer. Go off on Sonic Adventure Two. Adventure Two, the first game I ever played, and the one I kind of loved to death. The Emerald stages might suck, but at this point I can speed run them, so I don't entirely care. <laughs> Uh, the only uh, thing I truly dislike about Knuckles, oddly, is the one boss fight against King Boom. <laughs> I will say this, I preferred the Emerald Radar in the first game, where, like, you yeah. could have multiple Emerald Radars. Like, basically, in Knuckles and Rouge stages, you're searching for three pieces of the Master Emerald, or key sometimes keys. And it's basically the same as Knuckles' gameplay in Sonic Adventure 1. However, in Sonic Adventure 1, Knuckles only had four stages, and you could have multiple Emerald Radars going off, so you could search for multiple pieces at once. In Sonic Adventure 2, the stages are way bigger, they take up a third of the game, and the yes, radar can only do one Emerald piece at a time, which is just annoying. There's a mod for that. There's always a mod for that. <laughs> uh, uh, a lot of ventures. The the modding community on PC is always great for the adventure games, and I think here is recently begin being modded too, but that's another time. Um, but yeah, Adventure 2, still one of my favorite would, games of all time, event, along with Adventure 1. Would it be fair to say some of the best, and, and the Sonic and Shadow levels at least, some of the best designed 3D Sonic levels in the whole series? Um, it's definitely the best control. People will argue up and down if Adventure 1 or 2 had the better level design. Um, like 50-50 mm -hmm. on that. It's no, I feel... Level, I... Yeah. I think the oh. end levels of uh, especially Sonic really took advantage of the movement. Because they, they really refined the movement of Sonic in that game. It's like oh, so you mean like the ones things. where you're like grinding on rails and stuff in space? Yeah, and then there's also the jumping. There's the uh, one jumping, which just feels really good <laughs> to do. There's so many great iconic levels. Like, obviously, everyone knows City Escape because of music, and it's a great stage. I love that intro of the snowboarding section. But we also got to mention the likes of Metal Harbor. Uh, yeah. what, what was the jungle stage? Um, That's White Jungle, and uh, I forget what Sonic's is called, but I know Shadows is White Jungle. Yeah. Uh, here, let, let's look at... Let's go through some of these levels. Uh, also, anything else you'd like to add? Um, I think I said I said a lot. It'll just be level specific, <laughs> I guess. Oh, um, let's see. There was Radical Highway, of course, which was Shadow's level. Yeah, the first level uh, was Shadow. Definitely a great level. There, yeah. Uh, there's there's the one Knuckles level I love because of the aesthetic and the music, Pumpkin which Hill. of course. <laughs> Pumpkin Hill. P Final Rush! That's the level I was thinking of. Final yeah, Rush. Yeah, Final Rush is honestly my favorite level in Sonic Adventure 2. Mm -hmm. It's probably not as loved by everyone else, but I just love I just love how it uses Sonic's movement. It is great use of his movement. You know in another really great sh stage that does that? And this is on the shadow side of things for me. Skyrail. Skyrail. I remember Skyrail. I, that level is pain day right. <laughs> uh, it was a pain to A days. rank, but it's fun. <laughs> it's also really highlights how not functional the, the the grinding system is. Trying to swap between rails just barely works. Which is part just, why I was paid to A rank because I'm always accidentally missing something and dying. <laughs> because hear me out. One rail slightly higher than the other, so therefore you miss it entirely when you try swapping. Hear me out. Like, the rail grinding mechanics, yeah, it's being held together with duct tape and gum. But the actual act of grinding on a rail, it, just to me, is so cool in the most 90s of ways. It's still the best implementation of rail grinding because it requires actual skill to do, whereas the other ones simplified it massively for heroes and such. I remember Here. because I was playing Colors recently, and Colors is still one of my... Colors is still probably my favorite 3D Sonic game, but even because. I'll admit that most of the rail grinding in, in Heroes is just for show, right? Yeah, it's still a mess, but it works better. <laughs> it, it's, yeah. It's like, I've, I've played through a lot of Heroes, especially recently for 
Well, not Gibson, but that was a little while back. But oh, not um, I, not Heroes <laughs> Colors. Colors. I've I've not played. I've not played Colors, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm waiting on the uh, ultimate well, because I don't have a Wii. Here. I need ultimate. So, Good birthday so gift. The, Someone give that to me on my birthday. <laughs> someone get that say. man Sonic Colors Ultimate. Yeah, pre-order on my birthday. We just hit the timer. Is there anything else you'd like to add on SA2 before we wrap up? Um, It's the best uh, 3D Sonic game. Ooh, ooh. Well, maybe second Ooh. best to hear us. <laughs> no, no, I. You see, no, like I'm, I'm perfect. Like, look, I might disagree, but I firmly believe. I'm like, ah, uh, cue the angry Sonic fanboy emails. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Sonic Unleashed is better because the the, the, the warehog wouldn't make you do security hall. <laughs> Fair point. Security hall isn't Rouge's worst level. That goes to. I forget the name off the top of my head. That's how bad it is. <laughs> It's the one in space with all the planets and the, the, the oh. Mario Galaxy crap. That is that the one where hell. like some of the the freaking uh, hint TVs will just give you wrong hints? Yeah, literally outright. reverse hints. It's like the first hint is uh, reverse dialogue. The second hint is going to be the opposite of where it is. So it's like the things on a small planet. Okay, find it on a big planet. Then the third hint is more or less correct. It'll say it is not in this location when it is exactly there. The hints are dumb, but it still works. That's fine. The hints are fine. The size of the level is not. <laughs> now, that said, on that note, where can folks find you on the internet? Um, you can find me on Twitch at Eviscerator. Twitch.tv Eviscerator Mark 2. Under, uh, uh, Twitch.tv I, I need to let me grab the link so I can read this. www.twitch.tv. Right. I was about to say dot com for some reason. Dot TV slash eviscerator underscore MK2. Excellent. E V I S C E R A T O R underscore M K2. <laughs> and then on that note as well. Speedrun is made possible in part by Podbean. If you'd like to start a podcast of your own, get some nice, awesome paid hosting with unlimited hours uploaded, then why not go to podbean.com speedrun or use the code speedrun at checkout. Help the show get yourself some nice hosting. In addition, though she is not here, Jazzy edits these episodes and she's a part of Cleveland Audio Mixology. I believe it is. She does a fantastic job and we really appreciate her. Finally, Speedrun is part of Stuff We Play, and if you would like to get access to episodes a week before they're released to the public, yes, a full week, and even get access to early YouTube videos and direct access to me, then why not back us on Patreon for as low as $1 a month? All of that for a buck. Patreon.com slash Stuff We Play. Do it or I will look at you funny on Discord. <laughs> Do, what, do the what? What are I look at you funny? Support, support Patreon and all of these things and Jazzy or I will look at you funny. Do, do it or this will look at you funny because yeah, you're also one of my, my Discord mods. I'm a mod everywhere. I mod, I mod for the uh, <laughs> for the developers of Slime Rancher. I, I mod for the developers of Betty and the Ink Machine. I mod for like half of Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> I mod for half of Discord. <laughs> I can so, look at you funny um, in many locations. See? And of that and of, let me tell you, nothing motivates quite like shame. <laughs> so on that note, I have been Jamie. I've been a Sarah Mark too. Thank you very much for listening. Stay classy and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello and welcome to the penultimate Immortals Phoenix Rising speedrun end slate. Last week, we were giving away the second of our Nintendo Switch copies of Immortals. And you know what? I found a pretty good answer to our question. What was your first online game experience? If only because th this one's kind of more modern and it's really cool to see. So this is from Lexi who says, 
My first real online gaming experience with friends was a couple of years back when Destiny became free to play. It was the first big multiplayer thing I ever got into and I met some really cool folk. It was also my first big PC gaming experience too, and I really look back on it fondly. Well Lexi, that's awesome, and I really do hope you, uh, you enjoy Immortals on Switch. Now, for the final round of our Immortals giveaway, we're giving away a PC copy of the game. And to win this copy of Immortals Phoenix Rising on PC, you just need to email me your answer, as always, at jamie at stuffweplay.com. And it's got to be an answer to this question. Goodness, I, I've said this in the most roundabout way possible. <laughs> but email me your answer to the question, what is your favorite fictitious game or game console? Uh, email me your answer at jamie at stuffweplay.com. And remember, the question is, what is your favorite fictitious video game or video game console? Examples of those would be like the Game Sphere from Drake and Josh, which uh, still makes me laugh every time I hear it, even if uh, Drake unfortunately uh, isn't cool anymore yeah, after some uh, crap he did. But also uh, like a Lee Carvalho's Putting Challenge from The Simpsons, you know, those sorts of games and consoles. You have until next Thursday to send me your answers, and I look forward to reading them and reading uh, Jazzy and I's favorite out on the show. So on that note, thank you very much for listening. Stay classy and I'll see you next time.